relative to barrel roll and the various moves from barrel roll on film a little earlier on this film. Uh, we'll finish up the takedown segment by going back over a little bit that's connected with barrel roll, some of the variations that we can uh, uh, change off to if we had need. Now we showed the basic barrel, what we call an inside barrel earlier, where we step between the man's feet and bring our arm up between his legs. When he sprawls way back, we take that knee that's in our hand and we pull it in toward us on an angle, and then we do a good pull down on the arm, high leg over action, go up and get the waist area, press down so he can't rise back to base, and run our feet all the way around to his feet so we can switch hips and slip our head out, get two upper arms, standard two upper arms, tie up for a pin grip. Now if we can't hold that leg that we went after, he stretches that knee way back, we will let go of that knee and we'll reach for the other knee. So we'll be changing from what we call an inside barrel to an outside barrel. And we're going to pick that knee up as we pull down in the arm and we get the same dumping action and we do the same completion. That's outside barrel. If when we reach for the one knee, he stretches it back, and we reach for the other knee, the outside barrel grip, he has that one stretched back, or is stretching it back, then we have to change off to some other alternative. Now what we do is we bring our elbow and upper arm back up into his armpit, armpit area to cause the dump. So we pull down in the arm, and we dump by bringing our arm back up and pressuring him off balance and we complete the move the same way as previously. If when we're in on a barrel and we start to uh, change off to an outside barrel and the opponent finds us vulnerable to getting his second arm under as we bring him down, as we dump him down, he gets inside. If we've already committed to the dump, we're not going to get standard two upper arms as a finishing grip we have to run our feet around and change immediately to a headlock. Uh, his having second arm under is dangerous to us. He might be able to entrap us. So we've got to be smart enough to know that we've got to complete the move pretty quickly and complete it not with standard two upper arms tie up, but with headlock grip. If we get in on a barrel and the opponent senses that he can step across us and attempt double grape action as we're dumping him, then what we have to do is bridge to unload him. We do bridging action, unload him, and then complete the barrel as we normally would. If the opponent, in sprawling against the barrel, stretches very far away and is attempting to disengage completely, he's trying to get way, 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 way back, sliding away from us, then what we might change to is slip drag type action, come around to the side and get behind him using drag action. We'll face the opposite direction so that one can be seen a little better. We go in on a barrel, the opponent scrolls way back, stretches and slides way back, definitely doesn't want to be barreled. We have to look for another alternative. We change to drag action, little slip drag type action, get in behind and get two points. All right, we've had lots to say about barrel roll. Now we've got to say some things about working against barrel roll if the opponent were to attempt barrel roll on us. Number one, if our hands are up in front of us and close together, we're not vulnerable to barrel. He can't get the essential tricep grip. If our hands are down and apart, then the opponent would be able to get barrel grip on us. So key would be to keep your hands up and keep them close, and then you don't have barrel to be concerned about. If, however, the opponent shoots for a barrel from an open stance, from a stance apart from your own no tie-up, you might want to do limp leg, limp leg, withdraw your leg, and do a little drag action. We call it limp leg drag to get a little quick go behind. One more time, the opponent is attempting a uh, barrel. We withdraw our leg, call that limp leg, do a little drag action on his arm, short drag, 
and get it behind his arm and get two points on the counter move. If we're in tie-up and the opponent has tricep grip, he managed somehow to get it, and he's stepping in for a barrel, what you want to do is prevent him getting a hold of your leg, so you do an inside-out sweep-out action with your forearm. One more time. He's on the tricep, in on a tricep grip, and he's stepping in to do a barrel. We do an inside-out sweep action on his arm to prevent him getting the essential leg grip to complete the barrel. If ever you are in sprawl positions, you have sprawled on your opponent, he's attempted some sort of an attack move, perhaps and probably not a barrel, you never give him the barrel grip. You either put your arm in cross face position, get it on the other side of his head where he wouldn't be able to barrel, or grab his wrist, he can't barrel, or put your hand in the hock of his arm, near the elbow, he can't barrel, or put your hand on his head and press on that head with your hand and he cannot barrel. What you don't want to do is insert your arm or dangle it out in midair where he can reach up and get a barrel grip. So the hand goes in such a manner that you have cross face or it grabs wrist or it grabs at the elbow or it pushes on the head to stop any sort of barrel attempt. If your opponent is in on that uh, barrel and it's an outside type barrel that he's going to be attempting, if you are able to fig Newton fold your own arm and as he attempts to rotate his body one way, you are able to press down on his upper arm in such a manner that you're counter rotating his body, you'll prevent the dump. You'll be able to maintain your own balance and not go over. So it isn't a position that you're going to find yourself in often, but if you are in a small position where you can fig Newton fold your own arm and press down on his upper arm to prevent his uh, having the ability to uh, rotate properly to get you off balance, uh, that's something you might do. If he is attempting a barrel and it happens to be an outside barrel, he's come from inside crotch to outside the leg, when you sprawl, if you can get a second arm under, and if you can get that second arm under, it will stop this barrel action in most cases, and you might even be able to circle to the side and dump it, turn him to his back. So second arm under can be uh, a method that, uh, if utilized, could put the opponent over on his back and prevent him from being uh, successful in his barrel attack. One more time on second arm under. If you have scrawled against the barrel and you can get your second arm inside, that'll make the barrel very difficult for the opponent to execute. If you can now circle to the side and dump him, you might be able to catch him on his back. If when you scroll against a barrel, the opponent is going to dump and you sense you have the ability, you have the talent to step across them into double grape position. If ever you can get double grape, it is a very devastating pin grip. You will entrap him and put him on his back for good. If he happens to be changing off from inside barrel to outside barrel, that's an even better time to catch him with double grape because you'll catch his arm better and get him flatter, whereas when he's doing inside barrel, he's coming out the back door slightly. It's a little tougher to uh, uh, entrap him. So we'll show that. He's in on a barrel. It started out as an inside barrel. He's switching to outside barrel. As he starts to dump, if you can circle, not lose your balance, but circle and get into double grape, his arm that went to outside barrel position is entrapped. He can't come out the back door. It's not even close to being possible. And your double grape will be a little more effective. For additional thoughts against barrel roll, if the opponent goes in for a barrel, and he ha happens to be the type of person that doesn't do high leg over, and most people don't, he happens to be the type of person that sits through to the outside to get uh, started on his barrel dump. 
then what you might be able to do if you're quick enough and balanced enough is reach down and grab a hold of his bottom knee. As he sits through. Reach down and catch the bottom knee. And as soon as you get that, he loses all leverage to complete his barrel. Then it's just a matter of backing off a little bit, getting low enough that you can slip on ideal RC and really trap it. So one more time. We'll show the barrel with the actual dump, the sit through action and dump, just to show you that that sort of action uh, will initiate a barrel as well as hunting. Oh. All right, we're stepping in for a barrel, and we're going to show the uh, dump action. The man scrolls back, and we're going to sit through instead of doing high leg over. We sit through and dump and come up and complete the barrel. And that's what most people do. Most people use a sit-through type action to initiate the dump portion of the barrel roll. Well, if a man does that to us and we're alert, balanced enough, and quick enough, we might be able to effectively counter move him by reaching down and catching his bottom knee in our hand. And that'll end his advantage, his leverage advantage. We reach down, catch the knee right in our hand, and then we try to slide back and change it into ideal RC. It's not a counter move that can be worked by all people against all barrel roll experts. It has to be done by somebody who has the talent to do it against somebody whose barrel is not so, so good that he could be caught. Also against barrel roll, if the opponent happens to get a good barrel going and he dumps us, he has to get his head out to finish the move. So what we do is put a hug on his head and trap him. He dumps, we use our overhook grip to trap his head. And if he gets a little anxious, he may loosen his tricep grip that he initially had. And if we feel that loosening, we'll withdraw our arm, scoot out to our base, and use our wizard for defense against what might follow up his barrel attempt. One more time. The opponent dumps with the whistle, with the uh, barrel, you should say. He has dumped us. We put an overhook, wizard-type grip on his upper arm. We trap his head by hugging that arm. If he loosens his grip on our tricep, the grip he had initially to get the barrel started, then what we'll do is take that as a cue, withdraw our arm, scoot out to our base, get our overhook on good, and be ready to use a wizard to effectively challenge any follow-up move he might attempt. If the opponent dumps us with barrel, and we put the hug on his arm and trap his head, and he starts running his feet around toward our feet to get his head out, and that would facilitate or make easier his getting his head out, We'll run our feet away, run them away, run them away, run them away to get him to chase a little bit. After he's chased that little bit, we change direction and bring our feet under his legs, elevate him, dump him across our body, and come up into a double grip. One more time. And again, not to be used by everybody at all moments, to be used by some few at rare moments. Opponent gets in on a barrel, and he has effectively dumped us, but we have effectively trapped his head. And he's smart enough to realize if he can get around toward our feet, he can perhaps slip his head out by tilting his other hip to the mat. We run our feet away from him, get him to chase. As he chases, we change direction, come under him, use our legs to elevate him, and then step up across him into a double great position. And finally, if the opponent does dump us with a barrel and standard two upper arms tie up is to be his follow-up pin grip, we've got to be smart enough to not give him the near fall points he seeks. It would be beneficial to him in the bout. By slipping our hand around his head and under his arm and squirming to our base. And if we can't turn in toward him, we find that's not the way to go, we'll take our hand and turn the other way and with our other hand slip through under the opponent's arm to get to our base turning outward. And we will demonstrate those things right now. 
The opponent has gotten in on a barrel. We've sprawled back. He's still managed to dump us. He's come around and gotten his head free and is going in for two upper arms. We bring our hand around his head, underneath his arm, and squirm toward our base. One more time, facing a different direction. The opponent is in on a barrel. He has dumped us. Despite our attempt to trap his head, he works his head out. We bring our hand around his head, in under his arm, and squirm toward our base. If upon doing it, facing that same direction we're facing, if upon attempting to bring our hand inside underneath his arm, we find that we're not going to be able to turn inward, bring the hand around the head, in under the arm, we find that we're not going to be able to go inward. He's going to press into us enough that he's still going to entrap us into at least near fall points. We take our other hand and dive in through that same opening and rotate out toward our base. So if you can't go in, you go out. If you can't go out, you come back in. Either way you go, you dive your hand in close to your neck area and inside underneath his arm. All right, we've worked against barrel roll. We will now work against body lock. Uh, first of all, we don't want the opponent to get a body lock grip on us. And if he has an underhook and is seeking a body lock, we do a Fig Newton fold with our arm and fend him. We just parry and make sure that he can't fulfill his desire to get the body lock. If, however, he gets a body lock or is driving in to get it, and doesn't have it tight enough yet, or isn't able to get it yet, but he's driving in, determined to get a body lock on us, we might change off to a headlock. We hit him with sag action, headlock. One more time. The opponent is attempting to get a body lock, or has it, but it's not real tight yet. We may change off to a headlock. His head is up and exposed, and uh, we can get him. We get him. If opponent is ever attempting body lock action from the rear, it, the basic rule is elbows in and hips away. Elbows in and hips away, don't let him get the body lock. So that's how you defend him. If he actually has the body lock, then what we might do is entwine our feet against the lift, entwine our feet from inside so he can't lift us fully. Or do a single entwinement with one leg from the outside so that he can't do a full lift. If the opponent were to lift us and we're good at cross wrist roll, we could allow the lift and when we come down, turn our toes and hit cross wrist roll action. The opponent does a lift, we come down, we go right into cross wrist roll action, catch him on his back. If the opponent has a uh, body lock on us and might attempt or does attempt a uh, trip to the rear, we would use a uh, lift over, an arm dangle, overhook combo to do a lift over. If the opponent is stepping in behind us, what we do is overhook tightly, reach in with the arm dangle, get his knee, and then do a lift over. One more time. We have to keep our legs back so as, to make it to, so as to make it difficult for him to do the trick. So he's got the body lock. He's trying to get around behind us where he can trip us to the rear, get it to the side so that he can step behind us and trip us to the rear. Instead of allowing that, we go for the overhook, go for the knee, and do a lift over action. Uh, we're going to work against the most basic of all takedowns, double leg drop. Uh, a number one, if we're alert and have our feet spread wide enough apart and our opponent is one who comes in with his hands in, in a separated uh, manner, then he's vulnerable to what we call turn, which is a variation of a pancake. And we always dump the man to the side his head comes in on. 
and we have a tricep grip with one hand, and we have an underhook grip with the other. And the turn action is the pancake type action. We let our hips sag to the mat, and we'll have them in two upper arms. It's a very effective move. It's simple, easy to work, and very effective. One more time, the opponent steps in for a double. We get tricep grip with one hand, underhook grip with the other. We withdraw one foot slightly so we can rotate our hips more easily. And we dump them, pancake them, turn them to the mat and get two upper arms. Now, as we do that, we attempt to turn. The opponent is strong and has good balance. Then we change off, and you always have to have change offs in this sport so that you can work against any style opponent, an opponent of any ability or talent. We change off to what we call arm throw by. So the opponent has stepped in, he's going for the double. We're starting to do the turn action. He won't go. What we do is maintain our tricep grip, but with our elbow, we flick his other arm past our body, over our head, slip in behind him and get far ankle. As soon as we get that ankle, we get control points provided we held on to the tricep. We've got full control of it. One more time facing a different direction. The opponent has stepped in for the double. We've started to do turn action. He's sturdy, well balanced, strong, won't go. We hold the tricep grip and with our elbow we flick his arm past our head, slide in behind him a bit and reach down and grab far ankle that is far laces so that we get control points. If the opponent is in on a double leg drop grip, one of the most basic, simplest things you might consider doing is you reach down on the side his head's on and grab his wrist. On the other side, you get an overhook entwinement on his arm. And you lift vertically, pick his arms up off your legs. If he stays down, but happens to let his upper body raise up, you might change off the headlock pan, sag headlock pan. One more time. The opponent is in deep on a double. Face a different direction. The opponent's in deep on a double. We reach down on the side his head's on, get the wrist. On the other side, our overhook kind of entwines his arm. We lift vertically. And then if he stays down, but his upper body happens to raise up, we think in terms of changing off to a sag headlock pain. Another counter to the double leg drop if he's in. He's in deep on a double. You can get what we call PB grip. One hand is on his lat. The other hand is on the top of his uh, arm, tricep area, back of tricep area. And we fake a PB, which is sort of like pancake action. And when he's that little bit off balance, his grip may loosen. We turn and we scroll back on his head. His objective when he's in on a double is to get his head up. Our objective is to keep it down or get it back down. So PB facing the same direction. He's in on a double. We get lat. We get tricep, the back of the tricep area. We do pancake type action, which is called PB. And then we turn back the other way and sprawl on the man's head to prevent his completion of the double. If an opponent happens to straighten up too much when he gets in on his double, you might be able to do a walk over into a sagging double leg drop grip. He's in on a double, he straightens way up, you just walk your feet wide apart and then sag and get double leg drop grip. Double leg, uh, double grip grip, I should say. Double grip grip. Also against a uh, double is simple cross face and far rank. The opponent is in on a uh, double leg drop. Work his face over with cross face action, sprawl way back, reach way across, try to get far ankle. If you can't get it, you would grab near ankle, but you 
keep stretching your legs, stretching your legs until his hands come down off your legs and then you circle behind him and get two points. One more time. Opponents in on a double. You get cross face going. Just simply working your arm across his face. You don't have to grab his upper arm. Sometimes it's effective grabbing the upper arm. Other times it's more effective if you don't grab a hold of anything. You just bring his head back toward the middle of the spinal column a little bit. You reach for the far ankle, you keep stretching, scrolling, scrolling, stretching, stretching, and circle and get two points. Now if the opponent were to lift us in the air with a double leg drop, our instinct is to do a far crotch lock. We reach across and lock our hands, far crotch lock stop. When he brings us back down to the mat, we stay with that grip. And if we can play to a stalemate and get the ref to give us both a fresh start, that's what we do. If the opponent, in anxiety at this point, decides to let go of the legs and turn to get a half Nelson, before he gets it, we throw him across our body. We log roll him across, and then we scramble to our base and face him and try to make sure he doesn't get any points. One more time. The opponent is in on a double and is with the tendency to lift us, we work for a far crotch lock. When he brings us back to the mat, we keep that far crotch lock, play for a stalemate. The stalemate's not to be had because the opponent has decided he's going to let go of the legs and try to trap us with a half Nelson. We rotate him across our body, scramble to face him, and try to make sure he gets no point. Right, we're going to work versus lateral drop. Some of these things are already on film as a part of our lateral drop series. One thing to be considered when you're in lateral drop position is if you happen to catch the opponent leaning or driving, you could preempt by hitting a lateral of your own before he hits his lateral. A second item shown on film previously, you can arc toward the overhook side, squat, Lift his knee toward the outside to allow penetration, and then apply inside back heel trip action. Third item, shift around toward the overhook side to enable a diagonal body lock, locking under the far armpit, and then step behind opponent's near leg and apply pan type action diagonally to the rear, which is already on film to completion. Or you could arc toward your own underhook side and reach back and get wrist control to enable back off type disengagement via the wrist control. Or you could arc toward the own, your own underhook side and dangle your overhook arm, turning your palm so that you can catch the knee in the trail leg if he happens to hit his ladder. As he goes to hit it, you circle and catch his knee and come down perpendicular to him. As a final thought, you could arc quickly toward what will be coming a mat in your perpendicular alignment on your own overhook side just as opponent begins the lateral drop. If opponent is skilled in throws and is executing lateral drop throw, that last action puts you in a poor position. He'll get a high amplitude throw if he has good hips and is capable at that sort of movement. And always you want to be aware of lateral trip. Lateral trip is always a concern when you're in lateral drop position. So you want to keep your legs back where an opponent cannot step behind your leg. Don't let him get behind your leg. If he does, balance and strength will be factors in whether you survive the position and gain control or he gains control. Some thoughts now against single head out attack uh, takedown move. Uh, number one would be a lip leg drag. If you know your opponent's coming and you know to which leg he's coming, you can do a little drag action, a little short drag. Number two, if he gets in on a single head out and he happens to stand with that single head out, you can hop around to the side and get yourself into a drag position, counter drag action, put him on his nose, work your way out from under and come up on top in control position with leg hook drag. Number three, be a parallel liftover. 
The opponent shoots in for a single head out, stands with it, and you squat, get a hold of the knee, get the chin, and do a lift over. Bring your butt right up over the top, and then you can complete with either RC, or you can step up over and get into double grade, maintaining the chin grip, or the double grade. Either way, you've got an outstanding pin grip. And the fourth move against single head out, Again, if he happens to stand, if he goes in on single head out and he stands up, you can do monkey flip, lift over, provided you can get the chin and the underhook necessary to work the move. You elevate up through the groin area as you sit, and you use your other foot to elevate a little bit more, and bring him over, and you've got bar arm and chancery pin grip. You've got an underhook with one arm and a chin grip with the other. The opponent is trapped. All right, working against single head out and not against an opponent that stands up with that single head out but stays on the mat, we're going to work cross face and some of the combinations off cross face. So if he gets in on a single head out, you can apply cross face action, get a grip on that upper arm, and stretch the leg, stretch the leg, stretch the leg, slide back, slide down, slide back, slide down, and then reach for far ankle if it's there, or a near ankle, if that's within reach and easier to grab. And if you grab the near ankle on the go-behind, it should be held until the leg hook is initiated. Then you body the opponent's near shoulder and or place a hand in runner position behind his near arm to prevent any continuance of an attempted pivot in by the opponent. Now, if the opponent gets in on a single head out, and you happen not to grab an ankle, but you happen to make a fist and come up into his keister, as you stretch your leg back, you pull him forward with that grip back around his keister area so that his weight shifts to his hands or elbows so that he cannot reach up to prevent a circle behind him. And you'll be able to spin behind him while he's got his weight planted forward. If you're in on a, if the opponent is in on a single head out and he's got a very good cling grip to that leg, instead of applying a standard cross face, you can take your hand off that arm and come across his forehead and raise his head back toward his spinal column without injuring him and stretch your leg free. Stretch your leg free and then you could either grab an ankle to spin behind one ankle to the other, or shift his weight toward his hands or elbows so that he can spin behind. If the opponent has a very good grip, now if opponent is in deep on a single head out attack takedown move, has a real good grip, another possibility would be to use what we call compound cross face. On compound cross face, the free hand reaches under opponent's body behind his arms, and clasp that same forearm that the cross face grip has so that the strength of two arms can be applied to the situation. If you're able to take opponent off his base by pulling inward on his arm and bumping him with the elbow area of the compounding arm, you can arc around his head to put him on his back with both of his arms trapped in a crisscross fashion in front of his chest. Only the cross face arm need be kept in place to hold him, while the other arm or hand may be posted for balance. All right, go ahead, out. Hey, John, hold it. Opponent. Okay. All right, go ahead. If opponent counter moves or attempts to counter move against the reverse cradle, we use this as a change up. But any time opponent is in on a single head out pretty deep, you might be able to reach down and grab the near knee and pick it up in the air and dump them off balance knock him off balance to his hip, and step in for Turk. And just by Turking, his arms get trapped, and you can perhaps get near fall points as well as control points. So it's always a thought, Turk, as a counter to single head out trick. Versus single head out, if you're alert defensively as the opponent approaches, you can scroll back and clamp on, from a perfect position to clamp it on, a front headlock, reverse front headlock. And there's a whole series of moves that can be applied here. But before the moves are applied, some of the points that relate to the front headlock. 
we uh, use Japanese style front headlock and where we lock our hands under the armpit. The knuckles of the collar wrap arm are under the opponent's armpit and the outside hand's palm is up. Ideally, we keep our knees off the mat, but during the demonstration, we're going to have our knees down on the mat. We'd also arc toward the controlled arm side and place our temple under the frontal portion of the opponent's ribs and drive inward diagonally across toward his far leg. We'd also try to keep the elbow of the collar wrap arm up high, and that makes it tough for opponent to execute the primary counter move that he could uh, attempt, and that would be slip drag. If the elbow's high, he can't get the upper arm grip that's necessary to a slip drag counter the front headlock. Now, to set him up, ideally what we would do is put him in motion, put ourselves in motion. We'd drive in or draw him in by backing up, or we'd start to arc toward the rear. Now, as you have to create motion, motion is the best setup there is. Now the head, reverse headlock series. Number one, simple go behind via an ankle grab to a leg hook. You circle, reach in and grab the foot. You cannot pull it out to the side, that's illegal, but you can hold it where you've grabbed it and then circle enough that you can step up and hook the leg, body the near shoulder of opponent and or put your hand in rudder position behind his near arm to prevent any pivoting. The second item in the reverse headlock series is you circle and grab opponent's knee rather than foot and then you lift and dump him toward his far shoulder and then you lock hands to get the reverse cradle. It is wise to not lock hands until you've dumped. It's easier to dump with the knee grab than it is with the actual RC. The third item, if you chase the foot or the knee, you're trying to get around and grab a foot or grab a knee, but the opponent won't allow it, you can change off to a head whip. You whip his head past, get behind in your arm, and you get two points go behind. A fourth item, silencer. It's not a high probability success move, but it has worked well for certain people at certain moments, and it's worth knowing. It involves log roll action, and as you start into your log roll, about halfway through, you reach up and grab his other upper arm, and then you keep log rolling and come up to a near perpendicular position, not quite perpendicular, and you'll have a modified choke on the opponent, and he'll be pretty flat. Another item, a fifth item, Reverse headlock series is bar arm and chancery. On bar arm and chancery, you want to get the opponent to raise his arm up in the air so that you can get your hand underneath that arm. To stimulate him, there are two basic methods. One, you sweep his arm down in under himself. He'll want to resist that, so you release your lock when his arm comes back up a little bit. You're in a position to circle a little bit to the side, pull him forward and swing them around in front of you. And you'll have bar arm and chance. Another method for setting him up to get him to raise his arm up in the air is to start the circle behind him. He'll want to prevent that go behind, so he'll want to raise his arm up. When he forces his arm out and up, you release your lock and resort to bar arm and chancery. Now bar arm and chancery is very potent because the chin grip keeps the opponent from turning one way to get off his back, and the underhook makes it impossible for him to turn the other way to get off his back. So it's a very, very potent pin grip. And still another, a sixth move, the Julio. There are four more moves that we will show from the front headlock, reverse headlock, as part of the reverse headlock series of moves. Uh, one is uh, Julio. Uh, the first of the four moves that remain in this reverse headlock series we call Julio, named after a raw white high school wrestler who's very good at this move. And what we do is we force his, uh, the opponent's arm down under, trying to get him to force his arm back up. When he does that, we get our underhook grip, 
and when he brings his arm down to fight that underhook grip, that's when we reach way under and grab his upper arm or his wrist. If we can't get to the upper arm, we'll grab the wrist. Either way, we'll be able to execute this move. It'll be a tighter grip on him, tougher for him to resist if we have the upper arm. We get up on our toes, and we do log roll action. As we come out of log roll action, we do bar arm and chancery grip. And it's at that point where the grip on the chin it puts the opponent in a position where he cannot rotate outward, and the underhook grip under his forearm prevents him from rotating inward. So he's really locked up and in trouble, bad trouble. Second move now is reverse headlock pain. It's only for certain people that are good at this type of action. You may have to crawl backward to draw opponents onside knee forward so that a cross knee block may be put in place using your own knee to block. And at that point, you loosen your grip a little bit so that you can raise his head and swivel your own hips under and toward him to pancake him. The lock on the head is retained as a pancake, as a uh, pin grip. A third move, cross knee catch to turn action. It involves backhand style placement, the hand of the collar wrap arm on the outside of opponent's knee so that he can be tipped over to his side by bumping him and pulling down and around on the controlled arm. And then you change off the two upper arms with a little bit of turn action that you apply. And the fourth and final move in the series, as a, uh, a third move of these final four moves in reverse headlock series, we're going to do a spin behind via a cross knee catch. We're going to use the other hand to reach across diagonally underneath him and get a knee block, bump him, take him off his base. And then as he recovers base, we spin the long way around his head. But even though it's a long way, it's next to impossible for him to raise his arm up to stop that go behind as he's recovering his base. So you get an easy two points. The final move in this series that we'll apply at this point will be a diagonal drive through to ideal RC uh, to be used if opponent attempts to do a backup type stand up to get out of the reverse headlock. He wants to get back up. If you can circle around and get low enough, you lunge in and try to snare opponent's far ankle or lower leg and then dump them, drive him through and lock up an ideal RC to put him away. Underhook freeze position. If you are on a slight angle to opponent and have an underhook and have a tricep and have his head trapped under your chest, we call that underhook freeze position where his head is frozen underneath you. If the opponent would like to slip his head out, we do one thing or another, but we're always watching his far foot. If he happens to step up on his far foot, we forget about the other two things and we reach down and take what he gives us. We get a heel and do a heel catch. We drive him over that foot a little bit and get an easy two points. If, however, the opponent is in that underhook freeze position and he's trying to slip his head out and up, he doesn't like it trapped under your chest, as it comes up, you circle a little bit to the side and hit him with turn action. Put him on his back, two upper arm style pin grip. If, in an attempt to do exactly that, the opponent has good balance, good strength, and he resists it so you wouldn't be able to dump him, then we change off to an arm throw body. We flick his arm to the front using our elbow, slide in behind a little bit, reach down and get far ankle, pull in on that arm that we have, and the ref has to give us two points from there. So there are three moves from underhook freeze, heel catch, turn, and arm throw by off an attempted turn. We're going to uh, go over some pins now at this point in the film, and uh, the pin grips we're going to select uh, at the outset here uh, are off a one-on-one -on -one grip. A one-on-one uh, -on -one grip is where you have the wrist 
with your one hand on his one wrist. Uh, that we call a one-on-one -on -one grip. And uh, we're going to do a wrist pull-out action to get the opponent rotated over to his back via turn action to get a standard two upper arms pin grip. We pull that wrist down in under him, and as we're pulling it down in under him and alongside him, we do high leg over action. And we pick his hand up in the air so that we can thrust our free hand underneath his arm, switch hips, and then drive into him, body him over, and as he rotates toward his back, we get standard two upper arm grip. Facing north field, we get the wrist, one-on-one -on -one style. We pull that wrist down underneath him and alongside him. We do high leg over action, pick his wrist up in the air, thrust our free hand underneath his arm, switch hips, drive into him, body him over. As he rotates to his back, we get standard to upper arm straight. A second move from wrist pull out, if the opponent is prone, that's bad enough. If he allows his wrist to be pulled out to the side, that's worse. So if he's at all well trained, he'll try to keep his hand under his uh, chest or stomach area so it can't be pulled out. If that is the case, what we'll do is reach down with our second hand, our free hand, get his wrist with two hands, with the strength of two arms, pull his wrist out and up and put it on his back, hammerlock fashion. And then if we care to execute zoom, we'll recover our base and start to drive that wrist that we've got in two hands away from ourselves, body him, rotate him over, and we could get a standard two upper arms grip, or we could get what we call Ruggiero grip, where we clasp under his far arm there, under the uh, shoulder and arm area of his uh, furthest arm. And, uh, Put him on his back in a bad position. That same action, if we're doing a wrist pull out and the opponent clasps his hand to his body, it's illegal for him to grab cloth, so he can't grab his singlet, but he can use friction and try to keep his hand from being pulled out to the side by clasping his own body. We reach in with our free hand, get his wrist in two hands, pull that wrist out and up, put it on his back in a hammerlock position, and then we keep weight into the opponent, and we circle toward the front, get a far underhook. With our underhook hand, we reach up in there and get the wrist and release our other wrist grip so that we can circle all the way around perpendicular and get a chin, and then we rot rotate opponent toward his back without doing it too violently where he'll yelp from being hurt or from being scared, and then the referee would come in and uh, stop the move. We'll face a different direction now and execute thread the needle one more time. We've got wrist pull out action being attempted. The opponent is clasping his own body. We reach in underneath and get his wrist with two hands, pull that wrist forcefully out and up, put it on his back, Keep weight into him to keep him flat. Circle toward the front, get an underhook. With that underhook hand, we reach up and get the wrist that's being held by the other hand. Once we get it secured, we release with that other hand so that we can circle perpendicular, get a chin grip, and then rotate the opponent slowly but surely over to his back and keep both the wrist grip and the chin grip to get them flat and get to take to the uh, pinpoints for the team.